Well, you know exactly what they do. OK, riders coming down onto the grid. Right about now, number 77 on pole. That, of course, is Tim and Tristan Reeves, the newly crowned world champions. And alongside them, let's have a look, see who's there. Steve Webster, well, there's 91. Well, that's Sebastian Delanoy. And Ian's down on the grid, catching up with the former world champion, Klaus Klaffenbach. See what he's got to say. Klaus Klaffenbach, nice to see you on the grid of a sidecar race. Shame you're not in the race yourself. How's things going with the Superbike team? Yes, you know, it's some, some up and down, so sometimes good, sometimes bad. Today, Neukirk did a very good job. Uh, Frankie was a little bit in, in problems. He don't find the whole weekend the right setting, but... Generally, I think we are, for the first year in Superbike, it's okay. 66 third on the grid, the Scott Stuart Muldoon, ready to go racing. Ian's off across the grid to catch up with a certain Frenchman. Sebastian Delanois, second position on the grid. Uh, I know you can't speak English, but your lovely wife can, so how can Seb do for the race? Um, maybe a little bit difficult than the French Championship, but uh, he did a good uh, qualification. And, uh, I think uh, it's more difficult, but he wait on it, okay? because uh, for the moment he wait for the next year. Okay, good luck, Seb. <laughs> Thank you. It'll be interesting to see him next year. Well, there it is for the very last time, number one world champion Steve Webster and Paul Woodhead. Well, there is Steve, of course, on the left. <laughs> He'll be back. Not. That's Bill Phelps' crew. There is the current world champion, well, I must say now the outgoing world champion Ian. He's joining me back in the commentary box, because uh, Reeves, of course, is the new world champion. Yeah, last time we're going to see that number one plate on Webster's bike. Well, a bit of a messy start there, but uh, on board with Steve Webster and Paul Woodhead. And once again, they've uh, quickly going backwards off the start line. It seems to be their trademark, doesn't it? Yeah, well, backwards off the start line, he's still won or how many ten championships. I think that's, he's obviously got a proven method. Yeah, he just gets into the race slowly, does Steve? But of course, they started from the second row of the grid, and that's the first time in, well, I can't even remember the last time Webbo was off the front row of the grid. I can't remember the last time he was off pole position. Well, he's been out now for, he did the first couple of rounds of this World Championship, and then basically sort of stood down, really. He's come back here to Assen for the final time that we'll see him racing in competitive action, which has got, it's a legend, really, and we're seeing the end of a legend. Yeah, it is uh, completely the end of an era, but what a great era. It's been great to have been part of it as well. But now, on board, and it's 91. It is the Frenchman, Sebastian Delano and Nicolas Biddle that are in the lead of this race. As the rest of the pack stream through that uh, long, looping left-hand hairpin that leads out onto the back part of the circuit. Delano is away at the front. Tim and Tristan Reeves giving chase, and Webster's up to fourth position. Well, Tim... Reeves, of course, now the uh, the new world champion, and there is Bill Philp, 155. Bill, of course, from Boxing Motorcycles in Slough. He'll be looking to get a good result, being chased at the moment by, I think that's 88, that's Tiro Mananen. Oh, on board here again with yeah. Gatton Cox. Yeah, Richard Gatt has got Mark Cox standing in this weekend because Paul Randall broke his arm at uh, Castle Coombe, and they've just gone ahead of Gary and Dan Knight. So, Mark Cox, a bit of a super sub passenger, he's been... Uh, he was with Steve Norbury at the last round and, um, yeah, doing a good job. Yeah, good job of taking uh, the outfit onto the rumble strips and bouncing our onboard cameras all over the place. I mean, we won't have any cameras left by the end of this year with these things. They, they won't stay off the rumble strips, will they? But, well, you say it's the Frenchman, Delanoy, that's out front and he looks... Well, by the way, his wife was speaking earlier. It seems that they'll be coming back next year. Webster's on the move. Yeah, Webster up into third place past Andy Lalo and Patrick Farrance. Classic manoeuvre into that tight chicane at the end of the lap. So now, bit of clear track in front of Steve Webster. And what's going on here? This is uh, Ben Birchall and Roger Lovelock getting a bit squirrely there. Well, I don't know, don't know if anything happened there, but uh, yeah, it like Lovelock was heading off the track there, didn't no, it? I think they were both heading off for a, an early cup of tea or something. But there's Webster and, uh, well... That's looking a little bit further back. I'm trying to spot Birchall and uh, Lovelock. Haven't seen them so far, but Tim Reeves, second place with uh, the man that he's taken the number one plate from, Steve Webster, right behind in third. So Andy Laidlow there in fourth. Laidlow, of course, professional sidecar racer with one more round to go. What's he going to do for the winter period? Oh, I'm sure he'll buy a PlayStation game. Oh, and that's Roger Lovelock and Dorna Holloway out on the opening lap of this race. So they obviously did run off the circuit 
whether that was a problem or a, or a mistake, I don't know. But uh, Dawn have flown all the way from America for this race and to do one lap and then out of the race must be a complete disappointment for her. Well, never mind. That's just the way things go in racing. You have good days and, of course, you have bad days. But a good day for this man at the moment, Delanoy out front. Yeah, he's been a real revelation this weekend. He started in the World Championship in 2001, did uh, two seasons with a completely uncompetitive machine and was trundling around near the back of the grid all the time. He's been away, just uh, got new machinery, new engines, been learning his craft in the French Championship. He's been French champion the last two years, getting a bit <laughs> excited there. And he's just been a complete revelation, you know, second on the grid in this class of field. Amazing. Well, with one more round to go, of course, that's at the Saxon Ring, the final round. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if he does come uh, to the Saxon Ring and then even if he comes back next year, because we've got, we've got a lot of good talent now in sidecar racing, but it's beginning to bunch up, which is good to see. Webster has dominated for so long that uh, Tim Reeves came along and has given him a bit of a run for his money in the early stages last year and, of course, the early part of this year. But uh, Jörg Steinhausen, another one, the German, also looking very useful. We've got some good sidecar racers. I think next season's going to be even better than this season. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, sad to say, but I don't think we're going to miss Steve Webster because the action is still going to be bunched up at the front. So that's a good thing for the sport. Yeah, yeah, make races in a lot more uh, exciting. And you can see Webster already beginning to close up on the new young champion, Tim Reeves. Well, these two have been locking uh, wheels for, well, last season and this season, and, well, a little bit the season before as well. And Reeves has certainly been the, uh, the hound dog, as they say, on the back of Webster throughout the season. Yeah, it'd be nice for Steve to go out with a win at this event, wouldn't it? His yeah. final race of his career. He's made that decision as Tim Reeves goes up the inside of Delano. Oh, nice nicely clean move done. there. Yeah, nicely done from Tim Reeves. He, oh, Webster's got a problem. He's talking to Woody. Now, is that a problem for them too? Something's going on there between them. Yeah, they look to have just dropped off the pace a bit. I don't know. We're still there. Mm -hmm. But uh, Paul Woodhead was really beaten up after that fall in the first qualifying session. He came out of the sidecar at about 100 miles an hour and actually overtook Steve Webster. <laughs> um, and you see the cuts and bruises and bandages on his arms. And uh, yeah, he's well, he was a brave boy back, to yeah. start the race, I think. They're dropping back. There's no look at the gap now. Yes, they're drop. I think they may well have even pulled out. There's something wrong there. But now it's left for the Brits versus the French at the moment. Reeves, he has it. Delanois, second place. We've got a great scrap on here as the rest of the field trundle along behind. And when I say trundle, I don't mean it in a, an un sort of uh, generous way. But Delanois is looking, having, he's having a look, you know. I think he and the Frenchman fancies a win here. Yeah, he's not uh, not afraid of Tim Reeves, is he? Tim no. might have just wrapped up the championship, but uh, Delanois is certainly willing to stick his nose up the inside wherever he can. Made a bit of a mistake on that last corner, trying to overtake him manoeuvre, though, and has dropped back a couple of uh, bike lengths. Reevesy with his young brother Tristan in the chair. The Reeves brothers all conquering this year. They fought it, slugged it out at times, literally with Jörg Steinhausen, the German, and Trevor Hopkinson, the Englishman, the passenger. But in the end, uh, it went, the result went to the young Brit, Tim Reeves, who only really came into World Soccer, uh, soccer Racing, what, a couple of years ago with the M&M team. Yeah, at the end of 2003, he was brought into the M&M team at his first uh, proper world championship race and uh, was immediately on the pace. But yeah, last couple of seasons really has improved tremendously and culminating in this uh, world championship win. Oh, disappointment yeah, there. Yeah, he's out. Webster from Woody in the pits. Is it a well, problem for Woody or what? Whatever it is, that's a sad end to that career. But uh, the good news for Steve Webster, he set the fastest lap so far on that second lap, 102 miles an hour. So a new lap record around this Assen circuit. Wonder if Tim's going to beat it or is Webster going to go out at least with a lap record? Yep, well, we'll wait and see as the rest of the field come through, chasing each other. Martin Van Gill's amongst that group number two, but they're queuing up here at the moment, which is getting quite normal in cycle racing for the lower positions. Yeah, from about six position down, it's really tight. And that's Richard Gatt and Mark Cox ahead of Martin and Tony Van Gill's, the, uh, the Dutch locals. On board then with Gat Racing, Gat and Cox, the race cam, looking back at Tony and Martin Van Gills, the uh, father and son pairing from, uh, well, local lads, as uh, you quite rightly say, Ian. They are Dutch, and Hassan, of course, here is in Holland. 
Oh, look at that. You get an idea of what the passenger has to do. I mean, Paul Woodhead did explain exactly what they have to do. And Tony Van Gils and Martin having a look up the inside of Gat. Has they, have they made it stick? I think they have. Yeah, they've made it stick, that's for sure. That's the uh, that's the overtaking move, the replay from the uh, outside camera, and there it is, clean as a whistle. Tim and Justin Reeves out front, the new world champions. Are they going to change that to one next year or keep the 77, I wonder? Well, I think Tim's got ideas of keeping the 77, you know. I think he thinks uh, if Valentino Rossi can have number 41, Tim can He's have number 77. Right. Why not? Well, Delanoy there, number 91, Nicholas Biddle, the passenger for this 2005 season. And uh, I just can't get over how fantastic Delanoy's been on his uh, return to the World Championship. But uh, well, he's certainly fired up, isn't he? Yep. Yeah, he's just testing that back tyre to see if it's just at the right temperature, I think. He keeps doing that. He could find himself on the grass or in the kitty litter, which is not where you want to be with a sidecar. No, and uh, Andy Laidlow and Patrick Farrance down there in third position at the moment, but uh, a little way behind these leading two, and I'm quite surprised about that. I thought Andy would have been able to give Delanoy a run Ooh, for his money. We've got red a red flag. flag. Upside down, somebody. Well, number 89, that's uh, Scotsman Gordon Shand and his Irish passenger Stuart Graham. They've had a bit of an incident, and that outfit looks to be in a bit of a dangerous position, so I guess that's why they've red flagged it. Well... How many laps did we complete? Oh, let's see. Well, we didn't really see what happened, but that's been upside down. The main bodywork's come away from the machine with Gordon Shan still inside. Yep. Uh, I don't think too many problems there, but uh, just precautionary. So the results at the end of part one. Tim and Tristan Reeves having a 4.9 second lead over Sebastian Delanoy with Andy Laidlaw and Patrick Farrance third ahead of Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs. Well, this means it's going to be a two-part race, and the aggregate times from both races will determine the overall winner. So, complicated already, Kenny. Yeah, well, there you go. That's life. Back on the crude once again here at Assen. The sun's shining. You couldn't want for a better day's racing. It really is superb. There is uh, Tim Reeves. And Ian's shot off down there with the microphone to speak to him. Tim, yeah. restarted race. Any nerves for the second part? No, no, fine. Uh, the clutch had a slight judge on the first start, so I shall uh, steady away this time. Still got two, six laps to get in front, so it'll be steady away this time. All right, good luck. Cheers. 155, the outfit of Bill Philp from Boxing Motorcycles in Slough. There he is. He's, there's a, no, his head is inside the helmet. There he's standing up behind it. Well, Ian's running around the grid at the moment looking for somebody else to speak to. I'm sure he'll find somebody pretty soon. Ah, Andy Laidlow. Andy, you're having a great scrap there. Now, what's the plan for part two? Uh, try and get a good start again and try and hang on to these two for longer. And there's only six laps to go, so it's, um, I'll just try and hang on to them and see. It'd be good to get a podium here. 55, Mike Rosher mm -hmm. and uh, yep. Alof Harney, his passenger. He's had a bit of a wretched time over the last few rounds. Well, Ian's legged it back up into the Comrades' sound. Right, part two, I think about to get underway, mate. Yeah, six laps for this restarted race. And is Delanoy going to get away sharpish again? Oh, he's creeping, oh, he's creeping, creeping. Oh, oh that's, that's got to be. That's got to be a full stop here. Well, I thought it was a bit closer than the start of the first part of the race. Uh, Delanoy was a bit quick off the mark, but that one just looked a little bit obvious there. And I think we're going to end up seeing a penalty for Delanoy. Maybe, yep. maybe not. I don't know. No, he's got to have a penalty. That was clearly a jump start. <laughs> if that wasn't a jump start, he's got friends in right places. That's all I can say. He's out front at the moment, that's for sure. He's gone like a whippet out front. Yeah, with the grid positions being taken from the end of the first part. And it was well, down on the way off on the grass. Well, he's like a whippet. He's heading for the grass as well. It makes it, perhaps he's a part-time hare. He likes the grass. <laughs> Who's that in second place? It's number 84, Mr. Lalo. And Delanoy's <laughs> off the track again. Well, obviously those tyres not uh, quite up to temperature yet, but the rest of them seem to be Ooh. coping. Oh, just chopping the nose off of Laidlow, and it's all getting a bit fraught at the front. <laughs> Tim Reeves there in third place. Well, it looks like he just got a nudge from Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs. <laughs> They're, of course, on the Hanny Racing LCR Suzuki. Adolf Hanny helping Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs. Here's a replay to start. Well, that is just so blatant, isn't it? Yeah, but did the light had, had the lights actually gone out? That's the question. No, Delanoy was on the move <laughs> before the lights went out there, so... 
I well, expect we'll see Delanoy coming into pit lane for a drive through. We should get that announced any time now. Number 88, Taro Mananen and Pekka Koismanen, the Finns on that Tusmoda Suzuki. They're having a good ride. And uh, of course, with Jorg Steinhausen being absent at the moment, Mananen has a chance to go second in the championship. Reeves, you have a look up the inside of Laidlow there. It's only a six lap race, so if he has to do a drive through stop and start, um, it's gone. Oh, oh and we got two off, and that's Trevor Stafford, Stafford and yeah. Andy Winkle on the number 95 machine. And number 92 is Philippe LaBale and Christian Chignou on that. Uh, well, that's an interesting paint job there, isn't it? Yeah, chucking gravel all over the track at the moment. And poor old Trevor Stafford's beached, as they say. Bevy's missus will be watching on from the uh, pit area thinking, oh, God, 91. You've got it, pal. There we go. Drive through. Is it a drive through or stop? No, that'll be a drive through penalty, so he'll have to come into pit lane, slow down to 60 kilometres an hour, and uh, then get out of pit lane as fast as possible and back into the race. But uh, while well, he's already lost the lead to Tim and Tristan Reeves. They were smoking up the tyre as they came through. He, he knows the outcome, so he's, I think he's lost his heart with this one. He's just backing it off, saying, OK, guys, once I go through the pits and come out again, I'm probably going to be in last place, so... Well, that seems like a strange uh, decision for Delanoy. I'm not sure he really knows what's going on by looking at that body mm. language because the way he was going in the first part of the race, oh. just chopping the nose off of Richard Gat there. Um, he could have led this race round to the pit lane and uh, probably yeah. only lost six or seven places. So He's obviously used to driving on the, uh, the Perifique in Paris. On board with Richard Gat, he's just got past Delanoy and uh, everybody else making their way past the Frenchman as well. Gary Knight that's directly behind. No, it's not. It's Delanoy directly behind. It's Delanoy with Gary Knight yeah. chasing now, and I think Dan Morrissey and Rob Biggs were in there as well. But out front, Tim and Tristan Reeves, and this is where Trev Stafford was off the course. The slippery surface flag out there, lots of gravel on the track, and look at this, Taro Mananen putting Andy Laidlow under some pressure now. Tom Hanks, uh, I think he's out front of the Yeah, he is. Tom Hanks is in second place at the moment on the number 11 outfit. Andy Laidlow on the 84 outfit in second and third place, which I say the 88 outfit of Tio Manon and, and Pekka Kuisman, the two Finns behind them. So I don't think this race is somebody smoking oh, tyres up at the back. Laidlow really yeah. hammering that rear tyre on, uh, on that TFR Suzuki. Now, this is going to get complicated yeah. because <laughs> at the end of part one, Laidlow had a lead of 6.3 seconds over Tom Hanks. When we add the times together, that's going to give us the overall result. So, so long as Andy Laidlow stays within sight of Tom Hanks, he's going to be second in this race at the moment. But we won't bother about that, Nick, can he? <laughs> well, I'm not Let's just watch the race. I'm sitting here with my calculator and I'll give him that one up straight away. Because we'll wait to the end, I think, because that's the only way to work this one out. Because the laps are ticking away. Tim and Tristan Reeves lead it from Tom Hanks in second place. Andy Laidlow, as you say, third man. Oh, here we go. This is the drive through for well, the Frenchman. Not really a drive through, is it, no, Sebastian? Uh, you need to get your finger out and uh, be through that pit lane. Oh, I think they just realised what a mistake they've made there. Well, the passenger wasn't very happy with that no, one. Was no, he? no, no, no. Uh, there are words I can think of in French to, to describe exactly his, uh, his attitude, but I won't. No, probably best not to. No. Still, good to see Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs back at the sharp end of the World Sidecar Championship. We've really missed them at the start oh, of this season. Smoke it up, boys. Smoke it up. Well, there's going to be nothing left of that at the end of six <laughs> laps, is there? It's no way to treat a Yokohama tyre. Fifth position, Richard Gatt and Mark Cox. Martin and Tony Van Gils in sixth. Stuart Muldoon and Paul Napton down there in eighth position as Delanoy <laughs> rejoins the race. Well, that's really all over for the Frenchman now, isn't it? Can you, can you lip read from there? <laughs> He's got a dark visor on, I couldn't He's quite see. He's probably saying, uh, 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 we made a little mistake there, my friend. <laughs> uh, I did not understand. I did not understand the board that said 91. In, no. any, in any language, it means the same thing. Oh, well, there you go. Such is life. As they say in France, say la vive. Tim and Tristan Reeves still out front. Well, obviously, they had uh, enough of, of an advantage over Delanoy at the start of this second part of the race. Now he's out of contention. Tim really doesn't have to finish in front of these two guys to win it. But Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs pushing hard. 
Wouldn't it be great for them to cross the line first in their second race back this year? It's nice to see Tom back. We've missed him. And, uh, you know, say second race back, it's a new outfit for him. So he's doing remarkably well to be where he is. And he's staying with Tim and Tristan, the new uh, the Reeves brothers, the new world champion. So with half Hanks, he comes back. And hopefully Tom will get a deal together for next year. And uh, that's going to add to the depth in the grid once again. So I'm looking forward to 2006. That's, of course, if we're here. Yeah, for sure, I'm looking forward to it already as well. And uh, now we go back on board with Richard Gatt and Mark Cox. They were in fifth position, chasing Taro Mananen and Pekka Koismanen. And, of course, Gatt, he'd been out the last couple of rounds while um, Paul Randall had broken his arm. And, uh, and they've oh, got a problem. Problem, problem. Hand up. Yeah. The rest of them streaming through. Oh, that's disappointment for Richard Gatt. He was looking forward to a good race here at Assen. Back up front, Tim and Tristan Reeves still holding that lead ahead of a hard-charging Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs. Andy Laidlow still in third position there ahead of Tiro Mananen and Pekka Koismanen. Now you may be wondering why Pekka Koismanen has blue leathers on and his driver has the yellow and black leathers. Cast your mind back to Salzburg ring. Koismanen fell out of the sidecar at over 160 miles an hour and discovered the reason that he was having trouble was his leathers were too baggy and the wind was getting behind them. You can see it there on uh, Phil Biggs's leathers slightly, flapping up in the wind. The wind was getting behind them at 160 miles and it, making it like a parachute and it just dragged him out of the back of the sidecar. There's lots of pictures going through my mind at the moment, but we won't go down that route. But <laughs> Obviously it needs to be like lycra, doesn't it? Skin tight, and that's the answer. A little bit of uh, aerodynamics there. Yeah, not too skin tight. I've seen some of these riders. <laughs> yes, that's true. Of course, you'll be making your comeback to sidecar racing at the last round of the Powerbike Tour at Brands Hatch later on in the year. And uh, I understand maybe you're going to take a route out in the sidecar festival. Tim and Tristan Reeves out front. Tom Hanks behind in second place. And so far... Ian's gone very quiet over my remarks from about Brand Satch and the Sidecar Festival. Yeah, I was trying to keep that one quiet, Kenny. <laughs> but yeah. Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs beginning to close in a little bit on Tim and Tristan Reeves. We're in the closing stages now. I think we've got about two and a half laps to go. Can Tom Hanks beat Tim and Tristan Reeves? Yes, right, OK. Answers on a postcard, please, or we're taking bets now. Well, we'll find out very shortly, won't we? But these two have dragged away two laps to go. Yep. Laidlow still in that scrap with Mananen, but is he within six seconds of Tom Hanks? This is going to be close at the end as to who gets second and third. On board with Bill Philp and Rick Long. Well, they're a bit down the order, and ahead of them is uh, Andy Peach and Rick Lawrence on the l &W Racing LCR Suzuki. Well, they took a bit of a battering in practice, did uh, Philp and Long, but... Oh, ooh, straight pass. Squeezing past Andy Peach. They took a bit of a battering in practice and uh, a bit down on um, down on performance this weekend, I think, from what we'd normally expect from Bill Phil. He's been having some interesting scraps in the British series with uh, the two Hegarty brothers who don't actually race the FIM World Championship for their own reasons. I'm not sure what they are, but the uh, Bill's been having a great time with them. Yeah, and of course with uh, Ben Burchill and Tom Burchill. Yeah, now, looking course, yeah. back, there's uh, we well. Pekka Piverenter squeezing past Steve Norbury and Scott Parnell there. Piverenter, of course, won three races at the last round in Rijeka, but here at Assen, he's been uh, completely off the pace. Different story, different track, and at the moment the story is who's going to take the win here. Tim and Tristan Reeves, the new world champions. Out front, Tom Hanks. Oh, somebody's gone walkabouts. It looks like Jan Beavers on the uh, RCN bike. Well, they've had a bit of a mishap. They should know that we're around here, the Dutch people. Yeah, but, uh, obviously got that one wrong. But still, Tom Hanks desperately yeah. trying with Tim and Tristan just ahead of them. Sliding out of that left-hander and into this, uh, this tight right at the far end of the circuit. Tristan having a quick look back there to see where they are and what's going on. Of course, uh, they don't have any uh, passenger to drive a radio, so it's a question. Let's have a look at that again. Ooh, Just lifting look at those sidecar wheels over that uh, bit of kerb in there before they come into this long looping right. 
And here's the battle on for fifth position. Martin and Tony Van Gills ahead of Stuart Muldoon, but back at the front. Well, it's still a couple of bike lengths there, isn't there? And uh, coming in to start the final lap, Tom Hanks really needs to be a little bit closer if he's going to have anything to say about Tim winning this race. Of course, Tim having a, a huge advantage now that Delanoy is out on time. So I think whatever happens, Tim is going to be the winner. But it would be nice for Tom to uh, lead it across the line on the tarmac. Yep, that's true. And so after uh, an absence of the whole season almost, by the last uh, couple of rounds, he came back at the last round. This is the second out in. One more to go, of course, which is the final round at Saxon Ring at the end of this month. And we'll be there, and hopefully we're going to have some cracking racing. We will, of course, have our world champions there, and Tom Hanks will be there trying to, uh, well, do what he's trying to do now, I think, and that's go past them. Yeah, and the battle's still on for third position behind them Ooh. with uh, Laidlo and Manon and all together. Now Hanks is coming in quick to this left-hander. Well, Reeves, he's in the way there, so he's got to yeah. shut the throttle. Now it's the fast run up the, uh, the far side of the circuit through these kinks. This is flat out through this right left kink section before they come to the new chicane that's been added. Kind of spoiled Aston a little bit, but not too much, glad to say. Hauling it into that right hander and into the left hander. Do you think Tom's got enough left to do this? Well, there's only one real passing place left, and that's into the chicane at the very end of the lap. Oh, going in there full bore. You can see how much sliding they're getting on these machines now in the final stages. The tyres. Now he's looking up the inside into that left. Couldn't quite make it there. Lost a bit of ground with that move. Yeah, maybe that's the decider. I don't know. Well, he's still on his tail, isn't he? So this is the long loop in left. That but smoking that tyre just needs to get grip, not be spinning that wheel. This is the fast run back towards the end of the lap. Flat out through these kinks at 140 miles an hour, 150 miles an hour building up to 160 before this left-hander. One more passing opportunity coming up into the chicane. I don't think he's close enough to do it. No. If it is, it's going to be a suicide move, that's for sure. For maybe both of them. No, Tim has just... Oh, just kept it yeah, nailed through just that like, right. He hasn't he's, given up, has he? He's blocking Tim. His plim knows where he's going to try and know. There's the checkered flag then. It is a win for Tim and Tristan Reeves. But uh, Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs finishing second on the uh, tarmac. Have they finished second on the results. There's Steve Webster enjoying the race. Well, the results confirmed for part two. Tim and Tristan Reeves ahead of Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs. Andy Laidlaw and Patrick Farrants in third. Now, they were just 5.1 seconds behind Hanks. So, how does that match up in the overall results when parts one and two were added together? Tim and Tristan Reeves were the overall winners and it was Laidlaw and Farrants that took second position ahead of Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs with Taro Manon and Packard Koismanen in fourth position. Stuart Muldoon came home fifth, ahead of Martin and Tony Van Gills. Billy Galross and Johnny Briggs in seventh, Gary and Dan Knight in eighth, and Ben and Tom Birchall, a good result in ninth position, ahead of Pekka Piverinta. Well, the results are the results, and uh, when you win the race, that's what you get. The kisses and the cuddles from the lovely girls with the short skirt. <laughs> and the flowers, of course. <laughs> National Anthem, Tim and Tristan Reeves, the new world champions for the FIM World Sidecar Championship 2005. Tom Hanks there, and he uh, laid low on the other side. It's time for the champagne. Tom Hanks, Phil Biggs, another podium on your second race back, but uh, second on the road, dropping back to third. Did you know that? No, I didn't realise that. I, I understood it as a, re as a carry on, start and carry on from where he was, so anyone who made up position was great. But uh, I mean, that was as quick as we could have gone, so it wasn't like it was chasing time. But uh, yeah, I mean, I could have kept that pace up for the whole race. We had a few problems in the first half, but we, we put them behind us in the second one and, and went for it. And we could have, if that's the sort of pace Tim was going to go for the race, we could have matched him all the way along. Bit gutted we got, uh, well, you know, fair do as he rode well in the first half, but we were ahead really in the first half. But that's how it goes, isn't it? And um, Phil. As I say, you've been out of it for a long time now. This is a really great way to come back and show everybody you're back with a vengeance. Yeah, it's good. It's, uh, I've never really liked it around Aston, to be honest with you. I think a lot of cycle lads love it here, but for some reason I just don't like it. And uh, It's hard, it's been hard all weekend, but we've got the result. It's the first time we've finished, well, it's the first time we've had a decent result here in about four or five years, so made up, yeah. All right, congratulations, guys. Nice to see you on the podium again. Cheers, man. Cheers, yeah.
Andy, Patrick, another podium position. It's turning into a really good year for you. Yeah, fantastic. I would never have dreamed of this at the start of the year. To be on the podium at Aston as well at the World Superbikes is what a fantastic day. It's just been brilliant. Um, I don't know, I look at the lap times and we're lapping as fast as Tim and them, so I'm really happy with the way things are going. Ah, it's just what a brilliant year we're having. Fantastic. And Patrick, did you know second position was yours? Because you looked a bit uh, confused when you came into pit lane. Uh, on the on the on the rundown, I'm pretty sure it was ours. Andy didn't have a clue. Um, didn't know. I knew Delano had come through a, a drive-through for the jump start, so I'm jumped the start. Um, so I knew he'd be penalised there, <clears throat> and I knew we had a, a big enough gap on Tim. But until we got back, I wasn't, wasn't really sure. But I'm pretty pretty sure it was ours. So, so what's the plan for tonight then? Uh, a few beers, I think. Finish <laughs> off a <of> champagne. <laughs> <laughs> now, Andy, going to Saxon Ring for the final round, can you carry on this uh, podium run? Yeah, I feel really good. I'm getting more confident on the bike and everything every time I get on it. And um, yeah, I hope I get on the podium. Yeah, I'm going to be trying anyway, but it would be good end of the season, it would. All right, congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Tim and Tristan and uh, team owner Dave Roberts. Tim, another great victory for you in a two-part race. Yeah, I uh, really enjoyed it. Obviously, we went, we went really hard in the first half and got a fair lead and then just steady away in the second one. Had a bit of a problem with the clutch off the line, so we didn't want to chance it. So yeah, over the moon to have another win. It's good to have Davis, it's the first one he's in, so we had to do it for him, didn't we, really? And uh, Tristan, a bit disappointing with Webbo going out, though, because I know you really wanted to beat him fair and square on the track. Yeah, it would have been nice for him to finish. I see he put a good time in, but yeah, I think if, if he'd have been out there, we would have pushed a bit harder and maybe stayed with him. So yeah, it would have been a good race. Shame, really, but it's still good, still good to win, yeah. And Dave? Well, it's been a topsy-turvy season for you, but the boys have done a great job for you and brought that World Championship home. They've done an excellent job. It's a credit to them. Yes, honestly, it's a credit to them. And I can't thank them enough. <laughs> well, we can't, can't thank you for the money. Yeah. Yeah. Spot on. Teamwork, mate. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Teamwork. Now, obviously, this was the goal at the start of the year. Did you really think it was a possibility? Yes, I did, yeah. Yeah, I did. I knew we could do it. Yeah. So now the celebrations begin? Well, they will do. I don't think I'm up to it just at the minute. I can't drink a lot of beer, so uh, <laughs> I'm not really up to it yet. All but right, I'll well. get there. And there will be a big party, believe you me. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Well, I hope we're all invited, Dave. Congratulations yeah. on winning the World Championship. And Tim and Tris, congratulations on another great victory. Thank, Thank you very much, much. Ian. Thanks, Thanks, Ian. Jubilant Dave Roberts, the team owner, so he should be. They are the new champions, Tim and Tristan Reeves, 284 points. But look at second place, Steinhaus and Hopkinson, Manon and Quisman. It's all yet to be decided at the final round. Paverinter and Wall, Laidlow and France, Galaros and Briggs, Knight and Knight, Van Gills and Van Gills, Pedder Stedman, Morrissey and Beeks round out the top ten. Well, it was an emotional farewell to Steve Webster and Paul Woodhead after the race. All the teams lined up in a... Uh, a celebration of Webbo and Woody retiring from the sport. And everybody wanted to have their picture taken with the great pair. What can you say about these two? Between them, they've won 13 World Championships. Steve Webster with 10, Paul Woodhead with three, of course. Steve Webster, 62 World Sidecar Championship race wins to his credit. Is he the greatest sidecar racer of all time or not? Overall, with the number of championships and the race wins, he certainly is. And, uh, you know, it's been great to see him through the past 25 years coming up from club racer to the best guy in the sport. But Aldoff, Hanny has still got the best moustache of the lot. Paul Woodhead. It's got to be an emotional moment for these two. Goodbye to a true legend, Webber.